All right, everyone, and welcome to my final project, or you had the whole semester project, but you put it off till the end project. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but everyone, welcome. My name is Victoria Cologne, and this is Bio 2 with Professor Dexter. Um, at this point, I hope we all know that, but if you don't, that is the class you've been taking for the past 16 weeks. So hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, so I want you guys to meet my friend. Um, we met unexpectedly, and I thought it was the greatest thing that has ever happened to me, and so I thought I would share it with you. Isn't he the cutest thing? He's perfect. Um, I named him Steven. If any of you guys were wondering if I gave him a name, the answer is yes, and his name is Steven. I even hand-fed him some of the leaves that you see behind him. Um, he is a Florida apple snail. Very interesting name, but with purpose. Um, and we will get back to that in a second. So, if you are wondering where I found the cutie patootie. So, I was at work one day. Um, I, <laughs> I work at SeaWorld Orlando. Um, I'm in the education department. Um, and I was closing the park, and as you know, right now we are in the Christmas season, and we have been since November, so the park closes late, and we were staffing the dolphin exhibit by we, I mean I, and I was all by myself. Um, pretty boring, so as long as you are an employee um, at SeaWorld Orlando and you are bored, you are bound to find these snails. Um, they typically also only come out during the nighttime as well. Um, I'm not sure if that is um, because of the snails being nocturnal or simply because the guests are out of the area now and they found it safe to come out, uh, which I'm pretty sure that that's what it is as well as the dolphins because we all know dolphins are very interesting creatures. All right, so the genus of the species is a Pomacea paludosa. I hope that's how it's pronounced because that's how I'm going to pronounce it. So going back to why it was called the Florida apple snail, um, on the left-hand side, this um, shell here is the Florida apple snail, um, whereas on this side, that is the island apple snail, um, so our Pomacea maculata. Uh, so... I can only assume that Florida apples are a lot smaller than the island apples. Um, so this one on the right here could actually grow to be up to the size of the palm of a, an adult's hand. Um, same size as about an apple. So these Florida apple snails are mollusks, gastropods. They are bilateral, invertebrates. They're part of the loaf. Lophotrochozoan, um, Eumetazoa, Metazoan, and they are celiomates. Um, so their habitats, um, they're going to live in swamps. Maybe not this one, but maybe a little something like this. So they are going to live in areas that have both water and some kind of land. Um, those um, hard trees and the plants around them as well will be sufficient enough for the snail. So same thing with the lakes. Lakes specifically um, will tie right into their life cycle, especially those big stalks and the grasses that grow in um, and out of the lakes. And then ditches. I thought that this was very interesting because when I saw the snail, I was like, you are freshwater and this is SeaWorld. How did you get here? The nearest lake is across the street and you do not move very quickly. But the area that I found um, my little Steven in uh, was actually kind of a hollowed out area um, where a bush was growing. Um, and we do have a horticulture team that actually goes around and waters our plants every single day with fresh water. So it was actually, it looked almost the same as this, except a bush was growing over the little ditch canal area. So um, I thought we would revisit um, Stephen. 
Uh, just to give you a look of where he crawled up was kind of, um, there is a little dip in the back. Um, granted, this picture doesn't do much justice for that, but there is a ditch back there. Um, you can see a lot of leaves back there, and he was munching on those leaves. So a few of their adaptations, of course, they're going to have that hard shell. For those of you that have ever touched a snail, whether it was intentionally or on accident, um, they're very slimy, very delicate creatures, so they need that hard shell to protect themselves. Um, and as well as, since we were talking about these snails living in both um, water and on land, they have this very interesting thing that I never even knew. They have both gills and lungs. So they'll have um, their lungs when they are nice, um, nice out of water areas. And then when they're in less oxygenated areas, right next to their lungs, they can actually swip right off and they can use that gill and so essentially they could both breathe in and out of water so their life cycle is very simple really they lay eggs um many 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 eggs at one time uh as well as um they will incubate for about 7 to 14 days, so for about two weeks. And then you'll have your little hatchlings. After about 15 to 25 days, you'll have um, some juvenile snails. Um, and then after 45 to 59 days, you will have sexually mature adult Florida apple snails. Um, though not all of them do go into... Um, that have sexual relations, um, they do sometimes um, become hermaphrodites. Um, it just depends on whatever comes first, because they have 60 days to three years to find that potential mate to go ahead and reproduce again. Um, three years is just about their lifespan. So that is all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this presentation um, about the Florida apple snail and my dear Stephen.